Objective accomplished. Briefing commences. Commander, the Collective are growing stronger with each attack. It is vital that you recover the VTOL technology soon. Analysis of enemy flight paths indicates that the Collective's VTOLs originate from this area. This is the most likely location of the pre-collapse airbase, forming your primary objective. Mission timer activated. Select and move your returning away team off the LZ to an open area and quickly move to your MVG. Enemy base detected. Enemy base detected. Who are already having the time of their lives over here. Due to our Beta 3 preparations, we are face to face with the Collective's forward base, which contains their cyborg factories, as well as a command center that is spotting us for their large artillery. This setup, MBG and structures, should be sufficient to clear this mini plateau, but be aware of a dozen enemy tanks bearing down on us from the north. Our defenses should hold these up long enough to get the job done and swing the MBG to meet them. Immediately, one of our bunkers gets hit by what appear to be Lancers from Heaven. This is one of the Collective's new long-range artillery pieces, which we will have ourselves by the end of the stage. I mentioned in Beta 1 that the CB Tower was half the equation to stopping entrenched enemies with artillery support. The other half is to have our own long-range artillery, and by the end of this stage, we will. The good news is, bunkers are just as resilient to this type of artillery fire as they are to anything else that isn't a bunker buster or flamer, so it was able to take basically the entire artillery volley by itself. And this type of rocket artillery has a significantly long reload time. By the time it's ready to fire again, their base should be long gone. Also, I'll bring up my bombards to this area, but they will then sit there for most of the map doing not much. The counter battery sensor is the reason for this. My promised explanation is coming, but first I need to deal with this scuffle. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Two new types of VTOLs just attacked us. The faster of them was using a modified machine gun that isn't too effective versus heavy units. Since I'll be keeping my McHooters, McHooters? Stupid typos. McShooters out of this fight, the only thing that's really dangerous to will be the hover trucks. The slower and much more resilient plane was using a potent type of weapon that does a fair bit of damage, but more importantly has a blast effect different than any we've faced so far. Specifically, it does full damage to any unit hit by it. Clumps of targets, like tightly packed base structures or swarms of cyborgs, can easily be mowed down by just a few of them, and the packs of four planes they use for their attack waves are even enough to drop a bunker, bombing accuracy notwithstanding. Our Python tracks can weather the storm, however, provided we keep repair bays close by. Group 1 reporting. Enemy base detected. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Under attack. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Structure under attack. Group one reporting. Structure completed. Structure under attack. Structure completed. Structure under attack. 
construction completed. And the existence of enemy medium and long range artillery is a major threat to everything we've built, but the collective are restricted to the same rules we are regarding what they can fire at. Removing the enemy vision will stop their artillery from firing at most of our stuff, and the two structures that were able to spot our stuff was the command center on the plateau base we've already run over, and this sensor right here. Make it your priority to remove it as soon as you have a spare second, and the collective artillery will go mostly silent, only affecting you again when you start pushing their northwest base, or if you make the mistake of trying to have your bombards approach. And to explain why, it's time to give the explanation of what the CB towers do in this game in a practical sense. Yes, this is a two hour map, actually it will turn into a two and a half hour map, and I've now paused it repeatedly within the first five minutes, but I promised a CB explanation, a CB explanation is what you get. Sensor towers are easy enough to understand. If an enemy unit moves inside its detection range, then any artillery emplacements that have the range to fire at that unit will. CB towers also have their own sight range, but don't care about unit locations. A unit can drive right up and start drawing graffiti on one, and it will sit there and take it. However, if any form of artillery, unit, or structure fires a shot that lands inside its sight range, they will immediately spot whatever fired it, no matter where or how far away that thing is. And more importantly, any artillery emplacements that you have that are in firing range of that enemy artillery will switch targets to that enemy artillery. Your own CBs take priority over sensors when determining what your artillery emplacements choose to fire at. You can also assign your own artillery units to a CB tower directly, and it will cause them to fire at exactly what artillery that CB tower located. A brief disclaimer follows. I'll only leave it up for two seconds, so if you wish to read it, feel free to pause, or speed read, whichever works for you. So if you want to aggressively push an enemy base with artillery support, the procedure I use is as follows. 1. Move your MBG close enough to the enemy base that they attract artillery fire. 2. Move the trucks that should be following the MBG up to build a CB tower just behind them. 3. Wait until the artillery fires a second volley. 4. Move your own artillery team up to the tower and attach them to it. 5. Immediately after they fire, have them run a couple screens away from the tower and enemy base. 6. Repeat steps 3 through 5 until the enemy has so little artillery left in their base that none of your artillery team is in danger of being one-shot. A good rule of thumb is that if the enemy have more than one long-range rocket emplacement or more than three mid-range emplacements, you need to back off. 7. When the enemy artillery is brought down to acceptable levels, leave your artillery team by the CB tower to finish the job. Be sure they are on retreat at medium damage though, so that any hits taken are immediately sent for repairs. And 8. Once all enemy artillery in the target base is down, bring up a normal sensor, either a structure or the mixed bottoms, to start giving the artillery team other targets to bomb. So why not use a mobile sensor? It's due to micro. As I am no master of micro, I often tend to lose sight of some of my units while focusing on others, and just like the mixed bottoms, when artillery is attached to, I guess we'll call it the counter batteriums, the artillery will constantly try to balance being in a position where they have range to fire at a target and staying close to the unit they are attached to, resulting in me seeing, far too late to intervene, my own hover units having floated their way into a situation they aren't getting out of. And since my own personal goal when playing this is to never lose a human-driven unit, that results in a save game reload, which is another thing I don't micro well and can often be more than an hour ago. If you are good at micro, then by all means, use a mobile CB. I'll stick to towers. All this is great, of course, but as I don't have anything longer range than my bombards right now, and the collective certainly do, I won't be using this method for a couple stages. I will move my bombards to the mini plateau here to at least let them do something useful this stage. Once they arrive, attach them to the sensor and they will eventually soften up what will end up being the second part of this stage. 
After that, they can just chill here on vacation. The view's amazing. Morning. Group one, reporting. This is a new type of weapon, but we won't be seeing it in our own list for a while. At this time, just think of it as highly unlikely to matter to any Python track. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Construction completed. The full main beta map is a lot like the full main alpha map. Sure, it's a big square, but if you want to drive around it, it's more U-shaped. Or, in the case of beta, an upside-down U. In alpha, the reason was due to high cliff walls. In beta, it's more due to all of these random crevasses all over the place. The first major bottleneck is going to be right here. If you want to drive to the west half of the map, you'll have to either go through this pass, or all the way north and then back down along the edge of the collective's base. This makes this spot the first good forward place to set up at. Repair bay and AA are a must, sensors and direct defenses as desired after, but don't bother trying to add any bombards. From this point to the end of the campaign, every time the enemy has any reasonable amount of artillery present, they will also have CB towers to go with them. As such, the concept of forward artillery is only a good idea if you can engage enemy artillery first. By the end of this stage, we'll be able to do that, but as of yet, we can't, so no sense wasting the attempt. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Group 2 reporting. Assigned to sensor. Group 1 reporting. Unit under attack. Group 2 reporting. Group 1 reporting. Unit under attack. Another specific facet of the game's mechanics that is useful to know is how and when AA work. Emplacement AA and AA units by themselves will happily fire at anything they can. The four AA that I have attached to my commander, however, have an oddity. If you give your commander an order to directly target something specific, then everything in your commander's group will fire at, and only at, that specific thing. Which means, when I tell the commander to target a tank, unit. since AA can't fire at land units, the AA units stop firing entirely. Technically, I could tell the commander to target the VTOL, but that is, depending on game version and circumstance, either nearly impossible or actually impossible. I leave the AA attached to the commander for logistical purposes, as well as the fact that he is a hero level unit, which filters down to his attached tanks, making them all heroes as well. I actually rarely give him an order to directly target things, and any time I don't, the AA rattle away happily. However, again, if you are good at micro and wish to keep your AA separate from your MBG, don't let me stop you. Under attack. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack.
Construction completed. Someone reporting? Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. 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 Structure under attack. Under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. One reporting. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Construction completed. This stage has two parts. The first is clearing out their base, and the second won't trigger until one of two conditions are met either said destruction of said base, or we move one of our units too close to the other objective. If you are on the east half of the map, you can move wherever you want just fine. But once on the west side, if any of your land forces pass south of this line, the second phase will trigger, along with an extra 30 minutes on the timer. The extra time isn't actually necessary, but I certainly don't mind having 30 more minutes of cash buildup. I moved south just to clean up some of the tanks sitting there, so as to prevent getting jumped from behind when I moved my trucks in. But notice when I turned around. There are more tanks down just a bit more, but it's not worth risking triggering the second part until you're ready for it. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit 
Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Scope one reporting burn. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Scope one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit there is only attack. one entrance to the collective base, and it's directly south of it, through not one, but multiple narrow paths. If you value your units, do not approach it from the east. Instead, get set up south of it with repair bays, and wait to engage the front defenses until after a unit wave is finished. This does mean you will be subject to artillery bombardment, but thankfully the Python tracks can handle it well enough. The good news for us is, while the Collective seemed to have realized this was the right place to defend, they totally borked exactly how that defense should be arranged. Completed. Unit under attack. 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 Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Construction completed. Structure under attack. Construction completed. This is a good example of what happens if anything other than your MBG ends up taking artillery fire. Use it as a reference as to why you should never let anything not on tracks or concrete be the closest thing to the enemy spotters. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. 
Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Artifact detected. Artifact detected. Artifact recovered. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. We should probably be thankful the enemy VTOL factories only have the second module installed. After seeing how many shots their heavier planes were taking, can you imagine if they were actually using the heavy bodies on them? The enemy cannon hardpoint here will be today's designated survivor. Unit under attack. Artifact detected. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Artifact detected. Artifact recovered. Be sure to pick up all the artifacts in the base. We have a lot of research to get through, and once finished, a lot of building to do as well. Unit under attack. Artifact recovered. Artifact recovered. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. With the north base down, let's take care of the second objective. With a save first, not so much because of its difficulty, but because the triggers of, well, you'll see, and here. Major research completed. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. 
Construction completed. Major research completed. Group one reporting. Commander, we have determined that the Collective are rounding up all civilians in this area and flying them to an unknown location. You must destroy or drive off the Collective's transport and rescue as many civilians as possible. Mission timer activated. So rescuing civilians is the odd part of this. In theory, all you have to do is kill the Collective units near them and er, run them over with a unit. But sadly, that doesn't always work, at least not up through this version of the game. And if you don't manage to secure any of them, the stage ends in a loss. Thankfully, you only need to rescue a couple to prevent failure. But due to this rescuing impreciseness, you'll hear me rescuing civilians for a long time after we've actually trashed this area. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Civilian rescued. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Research completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Major research completed. Enemy transport detected. Unit under attack. Civilian rescued. Unit under attack. Incoming enemy transport. Enemy escaping. Unit also, Christine's attack. enemy escaping announcement just means the transport is leaving, not that you haven't actually succeeded in the requirement of chasing it off. Seriously, Christine, stop panicking us with that line. Power resource. Unit under attack. Civilian rescue. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Major research completed. Group one reporting. Civilian rescued. Major research completed. Group two reporting. Group two reporting. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Civilian rescued. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Assigned to sensor. Civilian rescued. Group two reporting. Civilian rescued. Group two reporting. Construction completed. Assigned to sensor. 
Once you shot at the enemy transport enough to scare it off, this landing area is out of commission. There are a couple enemy units and structures left on it, so don't go charging your trucks in for that sweet, sweet oil derrick until the MBG has cleared it out. Enemy base eradicated. Major research completed. Group 2 reporting. Group 1 reporting. Civilian rescued. Major research completed. Unit under attack. Research completed. Unit under attack. Civilian rescued. Major research completed. And we've done it. Bases destroyed, civilians have, are, and continue to be rescued, and we have a friggin' two hours left on the clock. Time for a save to make sure I don't have to do that again, and then one of my semi-patented cutaways. And I'm back, temporarily. In addition to the customary structure building, I will also be redesigning and rebuilding a number of units this stage, so let's get the tech and design out of the way now, and show off the map later. Research completed. Time to take a look at what we got. Weapon research completed. Structure research completed. Weapon research completed. Weapon research completed. Structure research completed. Weapon research completed. Straight out of World War II, we have the 105mm howitzer medium range and the Ripple Rocket MLRS long range artillery, as well as their base emplacements and, for the howitzer, basic damage and fire rate upgrades. Granted, our MLRS doesn't make a sound like a hundred zip ties all being pulled at once when it fires, but, you know. With these in strategic essence, we have all of the tanks we will be using for the rest of the game. Well, all but one, the one I promised to name for Alfred 007, is still coming. I will be liberally using both the rocket and the howitzer artillery through the rest of this playthrough. The rocket artillery has a dramatically long range, but its pitiful fire rate and lack of blast radius don't really make it ideal for reading into a general area. Its decent damage and repeated hits per volley do make it good at taking out single targets like hardpoints, non-moving units, and most importantly, enemy artillery batteries. Depending on the size of any given stage, sometimes placing them at your main base or landing zone can hit the entirety of the map, all you need to do is feed them target information. The howitzer, well, you'll see a direct comparison when I update armored shooters. Weapon research completed. Structure research completed. The Cyclone flak turret and emplacement. I'll also do this one's comparison during the unit redesign. Systems research completed. Systems research completed. The VTOL strike sensor and tower. Think of this like the sensor tower, only instead of directing artillery, it directs planes. Can be useful if you make specially designed anti-unit VTOLs. Systems research completed. Robotic repair facility. Passive upgrades are always nice, and I imagine we'll be taking more actual damage as the stages wear on.
Vehicle research completed. VTOL propulsion. Well, we can fly now. Weapon research completed. Weapon research completed. Cluster and phosphor bombs. VTOLs can mount most weapons that aren't AA or artillery, but they also get a couple of their own, like these two here. Cluster bombs are only really good against non-defensive structures, just like every other weapon we have, making them largely pointless. Phosphor bombs are basically airborne heavy flamers and can prove useful against bunkers and cyborgs, but another VTOL weapon will be coming that handles that role as well, as well as several other roles. Until then, our current land-based weapon options, augmented by the new artillery, will be sufficient. Weapon research completed. Thermal imaging bomb sites, which despite its name, is a damage upgrade. I have it on good authority that in the future versions, this will be renamed to avoid confusion. Structure research completed. Structure research completed. The VTOL factory and its production speed upgrade. Not much to say here. Vehicle research completed. The Collective Light Body, Leopard. Yes, the Collective modeled their FMVs after the Borg, and their tank designs after Germany. Vehicle research completed. Turbocharged engine, speeding up all vehicles. Vehicle research completed. Vehicle research completed. Thermal armor and the cyborg variants. We can finally start packing on some anti incendiary defenses. Yay! Structure research completed. VTOL rearming pad. VTOLs are the only unit in the game that doesn't have unlimited ammo. They need to land here to refill it after an attack run. These also, thankfully, repair damaged VTOLs so that we don't have to try and park them near our repair bays. It's a good idea to have one of these for every VTOL you plan on using aggressively to minimize turnaround time. Structure research completed. Structure research completed. Robotic factory production, and the cyborg variant. Nice to have, I suppose. So, our units. The MiG shooters are going to have their bombards replaced by the howitzer. It does less DPS by a fair margin, it has less hit points, costs more, and though I forgot to get a screen clip of it, it's also so much heavier than the bombard, that the hover's speed over hills is no longer maxed out. Most of this is just due to us having researched through most of the mortar tree, whereas we only have the first tier howitzer upgrades, but I'm still doing the conversion now because it's impossible to argue with its one major advantage, a firing range more than double the bombards. I can finally stop worrying about trying to edge my artillery team into firing range while trying to stay out of range of enemy sensors. The McSpottoms will still have to be careful, though. And I shall name this the Mark II. Originality aside, I promised the guys I named my units after that their names would stick throughout the entire game. Also, the Hurricane AA tank. The Cyclone has more damage per shot, faster shots, slightly more hit points, and no change in weight or range, all at a minor increase in cost. It is categorically better than the Hurricane, so I will update my tanks with the new design, and as well, I will stop building Hurricane AA pits and start building Cyclones. 
I won't remove the AA I already built in the last four stages, though I think the two can live with each other in harmony. Also, one new design, the Bug Machine Gun VTOL, or as I name it, the Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, or UAV, is essentially a suicide scout whose job it is to fly over enemy bases to reveal what they have, as well as, in later stages, draw some fire away from any VTOLs I actually send in on attack runs. Procedural note, you can't actually give an order to a VTOL to move to an area of the map you haven't explored yet, so using these as remote scouts involves me making a dozen clicks a second as they proceed across the terrain. These are, incidentally, how I will be getting most of my minimap screenshots for the remainder of the game. I'll give a demonstration at the start of Beta 6 as to what I do just for the heck of it. And now, one more cut to the end. As all stages after this one will be away missions until the very end of beta, that means I no longer have need to park units at locations on this map to prep for the future, which means I can bring them all to my away missions, which means giant unit clusters at the start of each stage. To help deal with that, I have moved a large hunk of my base away from the LZ to give me a large flat area to work with. My command center, command relay center, Repair Bay and Factory have all been moved to the east and north portions of the base. I have added MLRS and Habitzer batteries by the base, so that they can add some fire to the southeast corner as needed, and placed MG bunkers between them and the southeast corner, just in case the enemy break through the first line of defenses down there. I have also added the two artillery types behind each of the defensive lines going up through the map, and a significant number of them as part of the northern mega wall, which I am still not done with. I have also scattered the fast bobs around the map. When I finally get the last text I plan on augmenting the walls with, I want a truck in all the locations I plan on adding them for efficiency's sake. I will use the heavy bobs for my away mission needs for now. Also, anywhere I had Hurricane AA, I added cyclones with them, both at the defensive lines as well as the ones scattered around the map. And on the western half of the map, where there were no hurricanes, I just started throwing down cyclones everywhere, as well as a couple sensors. On the LZ, I have my team for next stage. Two trucks, four MGs, three Lancers, and a cannon. There's going to be a lot of cyborgs to deal with. Be ready for them. That's all preparations complete, and with a nice 40 and change minutes on the timer, too. Let me end things with a bang by chucking up a MLRS right next to the final tower. Construction completed. Huh. Okay, uh, and a sensor. Construction completed. 
Well, that wasn't very impressive. Objective accomplished.